And now I'd like to introduce Elaine Healy, our medical director. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so as Chris said, this is our 15th annual Stein Lecture, and many of you have attended uh, previous ones. And uh, in, over the years, we've heard a lot about Alzheimer's disease. We've certainly heard a lot about the science behind Alzheimer's disease, the uh, condition of the brain, and uh, vaccines, and research, and so forth. But today, we're going to talk about uh, a different aspect of Alzheimer's disease, and I think one that, that we can relate to on sort of, sort of more personal uh, level. Um, so we all know that Alzheimer's disease uh, robs people of their memories and ultimately of their identities uh, as a result of the deterioration of the brain. Um, but many people with Alzheimer's disease suffer in different ways and they suffer as a result of psychological symptoms um, that also result again from the gradual and progressive deterioration of brain function. And you almost can imagine that perhaps on some level they are realizing that they're losing their minds, they're losing their abilities to be themselves. So some of these poor, unfortunate individuals suffer terribly uh, from things like anxiety. They may become frantic. Uh, they may become restless and agitated. And in severe situations, they may actually exhibit very, very disturbing kinds of behaviors, such as paranoia, delusions, um, aggressiveness, violence. It's, it's a terrible, terrible thing uh, for them and for uh, those that love them to witness, and very, very challenging for those of us who care for them, both um, in a setting like this, as well as those who do so at home. Um, so these symptoms are not unlike those exhibited sometimes by people suffering from different kinds of mental illnesses, such as schizophrenia, where we've had such success in recent decades by using uh, medications to help them and to mitigate and alleviate their suffering. So naturally, uh, you can, I think, uh, understand how these medications might also be used or attempted in people who are manifesting what appear to be virtually the same symptoms. But as we will learn this afternoon, what is sort of intuitive and seems to make sense maybe doesn't always work. So we're going to hear about this today, and we're going to hear about how this was uh, realized, and then how we have uh, used different approaches, both in the institutional setting and in the home setting, uh, to, to help people uh, who are having these, these very distressing uh, symptoms. So uh, we're just coming off, I think, a couple of weeks of um, uh, interesting uh, happenings in Washington, which I think, um, regardless of your political persuasion, I, we would probably all agree that we wonder sometimes if our elected representatives uh, really are functionally all that well and all that efficiently. Um, but as a clinician and, and as a citizen, there are certain aspects of the government as regards healthcare that, that make me very proud. We, um, in nursing homes, are surveyed annually by the Department of Health, who is sent forth by our federal government uh, to inspect us. And they inspect everything. Um, and among other things that they do, they inspect how and, and assess how we use medication. And there are specific regulations, and I'm not a big fan of government regulation, but they have created regulations over the years that um, uh, we must abide by uh, pertaining to the use of these medications. And I must say I'm very proud of uh, our government in how these regulations were recently amended to reflect real sensible application of science and clinical management. And the reason why this happened, part of the reason, is due to people like our first speaker, Dr. Susan Levy. So Dr. Levy, uh, I'm going to tell you about who she is, but then I'm even more impressed by, by what she did uh, and how greatly it impacts how care is rendered in this setting. So Dr. Levy is the Vice President of Medical Affairs and Medical Director of Levendil Hebrew, Hebrew Geriatric Center in um, Baltimore, Maryland, a very large institution. And that, not unlike Sarah Newman, provides care both in the residential setting, uh, dementia population, and post-acute care. Uh, she's board certified in internal and geriatric medicine. She's a certified long-term care medical director. 
uh, and holds a faculty position at uh, uh, Johns Hopkins University. She graduated from the College of Notre Dame with a degree in chemistry. That means she's smart. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um, and she undertook a geriatric fellowship right here in New York at Mount Sinai, where she was trained by our very own esteemed Dr. Leslie Lebo, uh, one of uh, his geriatric fellows. So she's come full circle in many respects. Um, she's, her career has been characterized by a dedication to patient care, teaching, and medical leadership. Uh, so Dr. Levy, I first became aware of her as a major uh, leader in an organization of uh, medical directors, the American Medical Director uh, Association, AMDA. And this organization has partnered with the federal government to, and, and they actually are listening to the doctors in this organization and building uh, new regulations that reflect the complexities and the clinical issues around using these medications. So Dr. Levy was very, very instrumental in crafting um, legislation by which we must all live and, and by which we are measured and surveyed. And it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so Dr. Levy is going to talk to us about um, her role and uh, the major issue of uh, managing and approaching these symptoms in long-term care setting and how by partnering with our government we can actually work together to improve the care of our residents. Dr. Susan Lee. Thank you. 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 Thank you.